Gamers of Reddit, what was the most horrifying experience you've ever endured in a video game? There was this game back in the day for GameCube called Eternal Darkness. Your character had sanity levels and as this meter dropped more and more fricked up things would happen. A scream that you couldn't find the source of, blood dripping down the walls. An enemy attacks you out of nowhere and disappears as you realize it was a hallucination. The thing is, some of these happened outside of normal gameplay. It would look like you were turning the volume down on your TV or changing the channel or like a cable came unplugged. One of these was that it looked like you had navigated to the memory card, remember those, and clicked to format the card. That moment of panic, the complete horror as I thought that every save in every game I had played was being erased. That is by far the most horrifying thing I have ever experienced in a video game. Playing the first Sims game when I was like 9 years old with some friends. I covered a room in rugs because it looked neat. Turned on a fire because it was cozy. Immediately, the whole room was set ablaze like the rugs were soaked in oil. No gradual fire catching like in The Sims 2 onwards. The parents of the family were trapped and died. The kids on the upper floor couldn't leave the building because the fire was on the way. We couldn't change to building or shopping or click any commands. Not even speed up because it was banned during fires. My friends and I were horrified and had to watch them die for like, 5 minutes straight until the fire completely died out. My first Sims game was Sims 2. The very first night the Sim moved into the new house, he decided to eat barbecue for dinner, proceeded to light himself on fire and died because I didn't know about fire alarms. In Resident Evil 4, I was just shooting the water at the end of a pier because I thought I'd get the fish. When that big fish came up and ate me, I actually almost crap myself. Had 198 stroke 200 Pokemon on Sapphire. My little sister wiped the save so she could play a few hours on a girl character then got bored of it. Ah yes, it must have felt good being an only child after that. Animal Crossing for the GameCube. There was a thing that let you visit a friend's town by sticking their memory card in the other slot. When you visited it was really aggressive about warning you not to turn off the game while in the other town. Yet that happened. It was an accident. My character when I got the game to boot up again was a changed little villager. Where once was a happy face was two black pits for eyes and a month in perpetual scream. And all my money was gone. Turned the game off and cried in fear. Nintendo apparently did this on purpose to try and punish people who were saving scumming but all it did was scare the crap out of little me. The climax to dying light where you have to run. Away from all the night crawlers. Volatiles. Crap was heart pounding. Oh man. Being outside at night for the first time in that game was the worst. Eternal darkness on GameCube. I'm 17 playing this while home alone on a stormy night. My sanity meter is ratcheting up. My pet cat has a habit of playing with the cables behind the TV. Enter a new room. And the video drops from the screen. Goes black. Says vid1 in green at the top. Frick you cat go to look behind the TV to fix things. Lightning. Look behind TV. Cables still plugged in. Thunder. Blood curdling scream from TV. Jump. Hit my head. Gotta get a new pair of pants. Why? Why make me think there are problems with my hardware? Oh. To make me drop my guard and absolutely terrify me in ways I never expected to be scared. Metal Gear Solid 2 when Raiden is running around naked and the game starts glitching there was a part where it says not to sit so close to the TV and you should get some rest or something along those lines. It was 3am and I was sitting right in front of the TV. I just cut the game off. I remember the part where the colonel says something like, you've been playing the game for a long time, you really should take a break. I thought it was going to be truly necessary to save and reboot the game, since Hideo Kojima is insane. So I did. Playing Resident Evil in the dark and seeing that dang dog break through the window. I can remember everything about that moment. And then when you're expecting it in the remake. But it only cracks the window. It only jumps through when you enter from the other side. So it got me when I wasn't expecting it at all. Also, Crimson Heads. At university I would invite my friend around to play out last about one night a week until it got completed. For the duration of the game I endured all jump scares stoically, solid as a rock. Except one moment where my character was outside and a freaking leaf flew across the screen. It fell off my chair in fright. 
Since then if it is ever windy on an autumn day I can guarantee a smart ass comment from my friend. My sister unplugged my Battlefront 2 save file when I was saving to the card and it got corrupted. She wanted to watch TV. I had hundreds of hours of stats on that account. I'm still not over it. Batman Uclam Asylum. The Scarecrow Introduction. I thought my brother would kill me for breaking his beloved toy. Playing original Diablo and no lie. About to kill Diablo when a loud thunderclap occurred and shut off my power and PC. Shout out to the butcher in Diablo 1. When you open the door full of dismembered naked people and entrails everywhere, and that big mother yells fresh meat and runs at you. I was like 5-6 when I played that and I'll still always remember it. Max Payne where he has the hallucination with the baby crying and his wife screaming. Still gives me nightmares. My first shiny Pokemon was a Graveler. It used Explode. I've heard a story from someone who had observed the unluckiest person in existence. They encountered two shinies in a row. Both Graveler. Both self-destructed. They are also the reason I will always have a good supply of quick balls. When you're playing Medieval 2. Total War and the Mongols Tamurids show up for the first time. CK2 as well. A good late game horde in that game can freak up people in the safest of areas. Outlast. Whistleblower. When the last villain almost succeeds to cut off your genitals with a circular saw so that he can frick you in the wound afterwards. I'm not kidding. I always thought that Trager cutting off some of your fingers with those giant ass scissors was the freakiest. But then again, I haven't seen much of Whistleblower. The first time I encountered a witch in Left 4 Dead. Frick that crap. Man. I've never been more terrified in my life. The first moments when you step out of the bathosphere in rapture after a splicer has cut through some of the metal and the only thing you're holding is a dang wrench. Terrifying. The mannequins in Condemned. Minus the hallucinations. The mannequin sequence in that game was so well designed. The eye is basically designed to move ever so slightly right when they are about to leave your line of sight and make noise when you're not looking. When the game has you going around smacking mannequins just to make sure they aren't real you know it's done a good job of getting under your skin. Alien Isolation. Medical Bay. When a person sends you to look for something in an area where the alien is actively searching for you. You can't just hide and wait for it to go away. It will not go away. It waits. For you. Took me a month to beat that part. Then the hive level. Took me more than a year to beat Alien Isolation. Recommended. Because it learns. It found out I liked to hide in those computer carts. Though my scariest moment is when I found out it can chase you in the vents. It was after me so I ducked into one and made a 90 turn. I thought I was safe until I hear a fast bang 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 and as I turn around it was just barreling down the vent at me on all fours. Nearly past myself. Probably the entirety of Dead Space 1 just saying that crap fricked me up. Going down that ladder in the first FEAR. Not the scariest moment in gaming, but it was my first horror game. That split second still haunts me. My. No X. Friend deleted my Pokemon save and restarted with Bulbasaur. I only needed Growlithe and Arcanine to finish the Pokedex. I was 8 when I got Ocarina of Time. Those freaking zombies you have to get past to get the Sun Song and leave the Temple of Time as Adult Link have scarred me to this day. How about the dead hands in the bottom of the well and in the Shadow Temple? Outlast was terrifying. Especially the Whistleblower DLC. Whistleblower was hands down better than the original game. Outlast 2 comes out tomorrow and I'm holding on to my manhood while I can. Any difficult section in a game with unskippable cutscenes before it. The water part of the original Amnesia. The first time my friend and I tried to play this part, we were taking shots because liquid courage. Unfortunately, the more we drank the scarier it got. Accidentally using my last megalixir on emerald weapon 20 minutes into the fight. Vault 11 and FNV. The one with the sacrificial chamber under the overseer's office. Spoiler. Probably my favorite side quest storyline of any game ever and I don't think there's anything even linking to it. Just stumbled upon it randomly. The first thing that sprung to mind is hotel basement in The Last of Us. Up until that point in the game you had never not had a partner or two. And then suddenly you are alone in a pitch black pit of monsters. But that aside, 
The real answer is the entirety of PT. It's a horror classic and it's an absolute travesty that it's no longer available for download. When I was in middle school I got missed for my DS. It's totally silent except for possible machines you turned on or clues. In one building there were these books. You open them and there are screens inside with fuzzy moving images of people talking in creepy, old radio-like voices. Nope. Both the bad endings to that game really messed with my head. That part in Dead Space 2 with the laser in the eyeball. Cringy crap right there. Anything I related makes me freak out. It's as if my eyeballs don't want to see their kin being hurt in any way. I didn't endure it, but my little brother have told me about the time when a friend of his was looking over his save files for his PlayStation. He looked at an over 300 hour almost maxed out save file of Final Fantasy 7 and hit a button. Do you want to delete this save file? My little brother tensed up and said very carefully, whatever you do, do not select yes. The friend said what, yes hits random buttons, and the save file is gone. I cringe and shudder just thinking about it. That one room in Psychonauts. I was not ready for that. You definitely don't want to go in that room. That's a party killer right there. We don't go to Ravenholm. You know, it's weird. Horror games don't bother me, but Ravenholm. There's something about that level that just sets my teeth on edge. When I was 11 Halo CE came out. I don't play horror games, and didn't expect anything like the flood was going to pop up. It creeped me out a bit and how closed in the library level was a bit scary to 11 year old me. My little brother saving over my almost complete game file in GoldenEye. This was also what taught me to keep multiple save files just in case. In The Sims 3 my sim was staying at someone's house for too late, around 2am if I recall correctly, so the game tried to make a nearby sim shoo my sim away so he'll leave. There were adult sims on the lot, but for some reason the game bugged out and a baby tried doing the shoe animation, which just made it look like the freaking alien from Alien. Isolation. Pretty much all of Bioshock. When you walk into that dentist's office and it gets all foggy, and then he's right behind you just staring at you when you turn around. That of the shotgun on the floor in the pool of light. You know it's a trap, but dang, you need that shotgun. Sonic 06. Just the entire game, really. It's no use. I played Half-Life 2 for the first time and I didn't know anything about it. Then a mutant cat head crab jumped right at my face and I had never been so frightened over a video game. It Encountering the Surex in Metroid Fusion. Red Dead Redemption. Last mission. When you walk out of the barn, and see that there is no way in heck you're gonna survive that. Spoiler. I was naive and thought there was no way that I was gonna go out like that. I was about 11 and playing The Sims 3 with my friend, and a ghost possessed the bed in our sims house. We crap our pants and turned it off. In the first sims, randomly, the repairman passed away while fixing my dishwasher. From that point forward, every time I called for a repairman, his ghost would come by and fix my stuff. Wasn't expecting that at all. It was lemmings, or possibly lemmings too. Anyway, I was out one pixel in my digger's position and the whole troop fell from one platform into a burning pit of oil on the platform below them. It was all over before I could hit the explode all option. I felt so ashamed. Gamers of Reddit, what was your halt crap this game is good moment? The Kimmery fight in FFX. I think it was the Besaid Island scenery, but I just remember thinking it looked so amazing. The first movie cutscene of Tidus Blitzball game and Zanuck and when Sin attacked is what did it for me. That was total legitness. Storming the beach at Normandy in Medal of Honor. Frontline. The Ocarina of Time. First time walking out of Karkiri Forest and into Hyrule Field. 12 year old me playing God of War. Wow. They show boobs. This is the best game ever. Oh man. Bioshock's first bathosphere ride with the welcome film does it for me. I am Andrew Ryan, and I am here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his bro? No, says the man in Washington. It belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican. It belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible.
I chose Rapture, a city where the artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small, and with the sweat of your bro, Rapture can become your city, as well. Frick man, I still get chills every time I watch that scene. That ride is just amazing. The VA for Ryan did a phenomenal job on his cadence and emotion, and when the screen pulls away to reveal the gorgeous Rapture, it was just stunning. Stand back. The portal will open in 3, 2, 1. Wait. What the frick? Is, is that me? Crap it is me. Whoa I've seen plenty of teleporters and games even mirrors but, wow. That's amazing. Haha <laughs> I can't go back through it. This is messing with my head so much. Just some genius game design here. Thinking with portals is a tall order and this moment cements the concept so well using forced perspective. Playing with a developer commentary afterwards is great. Bioshock. Blasting Cohen splices away with 00 buckshot to Tchaikovsky's Waltz of the Flowers. Dude the first 20 seconds of the game after I realized I wasn't watching a cutscene of my dude swimming, I was instantly like holy frick this game looks amazing. Going down the elevator into the deep unknown abyss. Booked off the start. Say apple. Okay. Press X to say apple. Okay. What you're doing there is jumping. Um. You know what. Close enough. Let's go. Now you've been under 4. Quite a lot longer. And it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Progressing through that game. It only gets better and better. Then you get to the torture scene where Vol'jin beats Snake to a pulp and then Eva and Ocelot get into the confrontation in which Snake's eye ends up getting shot. You then play the rest of the game with one eye when you go into first person mode. I found myself replaying that game a lot. Halo CE. 343 Guilty Spark. The part where you are introduced to the flood and there are all these covenant running away. I'm down in the lower level. Seeing all these dead soldiers, knowing something bad is about to happen but not knowing where it's coming from or what it's going to be, I was mesmerized. That was my first console game and I am glad it was. Still my favorite Halo game. Arkham Asylum. The hallucination bits with the scarecrow. Red Dead Redemption when you're crossing the river for the first time and that music starts. It happened late at night for me. Was not expecting it at all. And I have never had a video game have that kind of impact on me since. I know it sounds stupid. But it was profound. That moment happened for me as the sun was setting in the game and it was just awesome. The Psycho Mantis fight in MGS. He moved my controller. I knew what was going on and I knew what was really happening but it still blew my mind for a brief moment. Crusader Kings 2. I started with the Vikings and Incest DLC. I've spent almost 4 years since then murdering my brothers, seducing my sisters and horses, and castrating my political rivals. People have it so easy these days. I remember when I had to pray for a bug to be able to seduce my sister or daughter. When I started playing my first game in the Civilization franchise, C3, at 5pm and the next time I looked at a clock it was 5am. Dark Souls when I beat my first boss, the amount of adrenaline you get in a boss fight, and the feeling of accomplishment when you win, is almost like a drug. Skyrim back when it first came out, I had made the mistake of thinking I could take on a pair of giants and was fleeing across the Whiteran Plains when I ran into a saber cat. Having had a few too many bad experiences with those suckers I turned again and hightailed it away from this saber cat and a giant that was still following me when the epic music started up and just as I was thinking what the frick my screen shakes and a motherfucking dragon comes out of nowhere I promptly scream and fear as this was my first dragon encounter in the wild. I realize I'm trapped between all of these guys and I draw my sword. I died almost instantly. I love Skyrim. I had a similar situation, except I was being chased by two giants, turned to look back at them, then turned around to keep running and there was a dragon landing in front of me. Fortunately for me his fire aggroed the giants and I got to witness two giants beat the crap out of a dragon. Instantly fell in love with the game. I went into FEAR thinking it was just a generic FPS with graphics that don't hold up. But the moment I realized the game is pretty dang good was after I noticed that the AI try to flank you and other tactics that I haven't seen AI use even on current gen games. 
I came into the thread looking for this one. The first time I played Fear Alma scared the crap out of me a few times. Probably the best scares I have ever had in a FPS. Final Fantasy 7. Leaving Midja for the first time. It's a magical moment when games can pull that off. I remember leaving Midja and feeling like the game just started. Final Fantasy 1 did that. In Mario, your goal is to save the princess. In FF1, saving the princess starts the game. Then you cross the bridge and realize oh crap. The game really is just starting. The moment in Fallout New Vegas when you have a discussion with Caesar about Hegelian dialectics. The fact that the game put so much effort into the thought process of the different factions and then showed the upsides and the downsides through gameplay and through world building was great in FNV. Alien. Isolation. When I hid in a locker for half hour smoking cigarettes waiting for the alien to either lose interest or find me and rip my face off. Only to realize the noise I was hiding from was one of them dang 1970s computers making a racket. 10 stroke 10 would get scared of a desktop again. Shadow of the Colossus. Okay. I have a sword. Use the light to find where to go. Holy crap this is gorgeous. The music this place is huge. Oh. Time to climb. Not too hard. Oh the ground's sha what the frick. I have to take that down. This is the first enemy. And then it kept getting better. When I was playing Shadow of Mordor for the first time. I had recently defeated a pretty hard orc. Leader. I rammed my sword through his freaking skull. After about 2 days in game. I hear Ranger. Look at what you did to me I turn around. And it's the same guy. But he has a huge metal plate over the place where I stabbed him. He ended up killing me. The Stanley Parable. Getting to the two doors and choosing the door on the right just blew my mind. It really felt like the narrator was right there with you. Responding with sarcasm and wit. And the confusion ending especially blew my mind even more with the level of complexity it took to get there. My only gripe is that there wasn't enough endings. I lost it when I sat in the closet and went through that whole thing. I love that every time you think you have outsmarted the game somehow there is so much dialogue recorded already. Fantastic game. The shotgun dong punctuating the Doom 2016 opening. Incredible. I love killing demons. And then cue the badass music. I got chills and thought oh crap. This is badass. And again when the crazy doc is over the intercom explaining why she's about to open the gate to heck. Shudder. Freelancer. Space simulator where you can do pretty much anything and have good modding support. Feel like being a pirate and steal some high commodity cargo? Go ahead. Wanna save the day and blow up pirates? Yes you can and can get bounty money. So many hours on that game and wish they came out with a remaster. The opening moments of Dead Space 2. No punches were pulled. Metal Gear Solid 4. Crawling through oven hallway. Epic. That was epic. But my favorite part was the fighting against Liquid Snake in the end. The HUD changes showing different generations of games. The theme songs are from the first game to the last one. All of those gave me an epic feel. Uncharted 3's scene with the cargo plane flying over the desert was a pretty amazing moment for me. Such a cool set piece taken straight out of a great action movie. Factorio, when I dreamt of Belt the night after. When I first played Undertale, I killed Toriel. I knew from the game's reputation that you could have a purely pacifist run. So I reset the game so I could try a game to spare her. And I did. Then Floe called me out for safe scumming. Fantastic oh crap moment that uses the fourth wall for actual story and drama. Dragon Age Origins. While making your way through the deep roads. You hear this creepy as heck voice reading off a poem about how her party was murdered and or turned into horrible abominations. The environment was claustrophobic and the voice actress just nailed those lines. I was freaking out a little. And then you have to fight the brood mother. Man, that is my favorite game. Surprised no one's commented burning marijuana farm in Far Cry 3. In Silent Hill. The first time the game switches to that dark dimension, or whatever the frick that creepifying crap was, my mind exploded, and so did my butthole. The first time I played Stardew Valley, when I looked at the clock and realized I just played 5 straight hours, and enjoyed about every minute of it, the rest of the time, well, dying in the cave sucks. Effects and cause mission in Titanfall 2, god dang. 
black flag. I could seriously just sail the seas blowing up British and Spanish ships for hours. Ubisoft accidentally created one of the best pirate games ever made. When I first got to Novigrad in Witcher 3, it just feels like a real city unlike games like Skyrim, where they are all tiny. I also had one with the Blood and Wine expansion, walking around Chusan is just magical. Skellige for me, after the filth, thievery, bigotry, and corruption of Novigrad and Velen as a whole, Skellige was such a breath of fresh air, I still remember the first half hour or so of Skellige vividly. The first scene in Kingdom Hearts when all the Disney villains are sitting around sniping at each other and discussing their master plan. I would only later realize that Disney has done this stuff before, with House of Villains and such. Also in 2002, but at the time it was like whoa, they put Jafar and Ursula in the same room. This crap is off the chain. I like crossover stuff. Planet Size 2. When I looked up, saw like 30 galaxies dropping troops on our base. Freaking awesome. Fallout 3, when you first step out of the vault, I don't know why, but I get goosebumps every time. Yes, that was the first time I ever played a Fallout game and I can't think of a more iconic way that a world has been introduced to me. The Witcher 3, as soon as I finished the Bloody Baron questline, I was just blown away by the level of writing. There were so many different endings, so many paths to get to the end, and the characters themselves were all very believable. Not to mention, the combat in that game is amazing once you get past the learning curve. I finally started playing this game last month after all my friends wouldn't shut up about it. It took me a few hours to really get into it, but I'm glad I did. I'm really close to the end, just talked to Giles and rescued Philippa, but I'm trying to milk it out for another 2 weeks until Mass Effect comes out. Chrono Trigger, what happens in the judgement I couldn't expect? More aligned. I grabbed the ring from the barrel, headed through the office, and stepped out into a small village situated along the coast. I looked around and started on an adventure. Or that moment when you find out a living god is holding up a giant meteor with his mind, stopping it from smashing into the city, and you get to go inside said meteor. Oldie, but descent, free space, the opening cinematic gripped me, but seeing the alien ships, and their insane power level filled you with a sense of desperation a lot of games never could. When I first got my 360 and got Gears of War, sawing someone in half with a chainsaw for the first time was extremely satisfying and was truly my first next gen moment. Hammer of Dawn at the end of Gao 2, just saying. Gamers of Reddit, what started your love for gaming? My dad started it, he used to play games on the computer and would let me sit on his lap while he played. I loved watching him, and he showed me how to use the controls so I could start playing myself. He had a computer for me across the table from his, and we used to play together. When I got better, we used to go to land stores and enter competitions together in Unreal Tournament, and a few times we even won. He was patient with me, and anything I failed at doing right in a game he taught me to laugh at instead of getting frustrated and angry. Some of my best memories is playing alongside him or watching him play. I still love that, and so does he. Frick I need to call my dad. Strategy games. Allows me to command armies and crush my enemies. Command and conquer. Generals was my mental coming of age. My mum and dad. I have gamer parents. Pong. Holler for the old farts. Hool. Ack. Cough. Cough. Holler. Sleepovers at my cousin's house. He had an Atari 2600 and I was hooked. My grandfather had an Atari 2600 with pinball. I loved it so much. Pokemon. Same here. Got a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Yellow Edition for Christmas in 1999. That was my first video game. It was 1978. I was in the skating rink. I was 8 years old and there were some video games off to the side. I had never seen anything like it before. I had seen pinball machines mostly on TV, 
but coin-operated video games were another matter. There was this Space Invaders machine and it was calling me and calling me. I finally went over to investigate and I found that to enjoy the cornucopia of illuminated invaders shooting down at your one-man base station while you try to pick them all off only costs the price of $25. I almost didn't do any skating the whole time I was at the rink I was so enthralled. I had already seen Pong but I had a Pong console at home this was something altogether different. Pokemon or good doll rune escape. Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. 99% sure that game is the reason why I need to 100% complete every game I get now. My dad actually. It was back in 2005 when MMORPGs were as popular as battle royales nowadays. Back then, me, my brother, and father used to play Fliffalot, a party of three ready to enter and raid any dungeon, or grind together. I think we played it for around 4 years. Dad quit on 2009 with his max character being LVL118. The most I did was LVL116 on my Elementor. I sometimes wish for these kind of games to come back. Nowadays, I play lol along my two brothers, dad no longer play with us, and that's for a really good reason. Minicrufts and Halo. Final Fantasy 7 on the PlayStation. Was amazed that the story kept going on and on and on. Morrowind was the main game that solidified this love however, such freedom to play again and again, even before mods were thrown in. Nothing has ever touched Morrowind for me. Yeah the graphics and combat are outdated, but you can be anything, do anything. No invisible walls, no limits to your power. You can become a self-made demigod and millionaire then swim endlessly across the ocean. Counter-Strike 1.6 all the way back on the Super Nintendo and games like Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country. Then on the original Game Boy with Donkey Kong and Pokemon Blue. Yep, those feels man. DKC2 is still basically flawless emo. My father bought me the SNES and the original Game Boy on the same day back in 1990 along with a few games, but most notably Super Mario World and Super Mario Land. 5 minutes and I was hooked. Now it's been 30 years and I've owned almost every platform you can imagine since then, though I've gotten rid of most of them over the years, and I'm still going strong with no sign of ever stopping. The Wii U is the only Nintendo platform I've never owned. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I started on Majora's Mask, so pretty similar. Getting a Game Boy for my 5th birthday with Pokemon Yellow and playing Sonic on my Sega Genesis. Sonic on the Sega Genesis was a super dope game. My dad let me play Prince, Wolf 3D and Dangerous Dave when I was a kid. Then I made some older friend who were already into gaming and slowly I was introduced to things like GTA. I've gamed all my life because my father did and I always adopted his older gaming PCs. And when I finally decided to build my own, he helped me with it. But my first love was Minecraft. Endless possibilities with what to do and how to be creative. However I don't play it as much anymore since I've moved more towards competitive gaming since I've grown older. But I still love Minecraft and enjoy playing it to calm down from the more competitive kinds of games. Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, a lot of open world games still feel relatively linear to me until that game. My first experience of gaming when my best friend got an Xbox 360. We used to play together almost every day. After a while whenever I was free and I had nothing to do, gaming was my go to. Even when I'm watching a movie or TV show, after a while I would think to myself that I'd rather be gaming. So yeah, if I have time to burn, I'm mostly gaming. Mario Duck Hunt, NES. Not sure, I've always loved gaming. Probably when my mom played Pokemon Silver with me looking on before I could even read. From even before I could remember, actually, I think it even helped me learn to read. Had an old Sega system, not sure what the model was, 1999 to 2000, with a game collection with a beat em up, Tetris, Sonic, and other games when I was 2 or 3, same time as the Pokemon stuff, and a little after. I guess my love of gaming was cemented when we upgraded to an N64 with Mario 64, Mario Kart, and Smash. Ratchet and Clank when I was 4 years old. 
my older brother sneaking in past bedtime in the early 90s to play a racing game with me on our tiny black and white TV. I even remember a few years later my brother got to the end boss on Contra, paused it and turned off the TV, so he could show me in the morning. Well my older sister woke up and saw the Nintendo on, wigged out and turned it off. Still to this day I've never seen the final boss on Contra. Thanks sis. Wigged out. Oh my gosh. I swear the entire 90s just flashed before my eyes. Golden IN64. It was the multiplayer experience and the fact that it was the first game I beat by myself at the age of 8. It was also the game I was playing when my dad told me he was leaving and not gonna be living with us. After that I sunk into this and other games as a way of escapism and dealing with what was happening in my family. It was video games and a strong, loving mother that kept me distracted and happy through it all. That's why games mean so much to me. They're my way to unwind and immerse myself in another world that's not my own. Playing SMB3 with my grandpap every night before bedtime when I stayed over his house when both parents were in the hospital. My dad had broken his leg slipping on ice going down some steps. My sister was sick with an infection so my mom stayed with her. So I got to spend a week at my grandparents house and every night. Grandpap and I would start SMB3 and play as far as we could before it was bedtime. I honestly don't know. I've been playing video games for so long that I can't remember what my first video game even was. I can remember always being drawn to them as a young child. If there was a Super Nintendo or an N64 or something, I always wanted to play it. I played PC games before I ever had a console of my own simply because we already had a computer. But I couldn't tell you where it all started. I was just predisposed to it. I relate to this so hard. Video games have been such a huge part of my life. My dad, as much as he hates video games now, used to play Warcraft 2 with me and my siblings. Then Warcraft 3 came out, and he didn't want to change. But Warcraft 2 stopped working on Mac, so he just stopped playing and I didn't. Pong, Pac-Man, Tempest, Missile Command, Space Invaders, The Good Old Days. Robotron would like a word. Super Mario Odyssey I. AII. Newbies are always welcome. When I was 7, the hot toy was the Nintendo Entertainment System Action Pack. I opened it on Christmas and shot ducks all goddamn morning before diving into sewer pipes all afternoon. I'd had a computer, Atari 800, in the house for years, and had played Pac-Man and Donkey Kong before, but I had never been very good. The NES was a revelation to me, and I've played games ever since. With a few years off during college and grad school, I miss the PS2, partly due to poverty and partly due to lack of time. Two moments for me. I was 5 years old and all the cool kids at kindergarten had Pokemon yellow blue red on Game Boy Color. I knew I had to get one as well. Fast forward to when I was 8 or 9 I'm at a family friend's place and this cutie grill 2 years older than me showed me runescape on windows xp. I was lost on what to do click so she put her hand on my hand, that was on the mouse, and did some sandwich clicking for me, after that I was hooked for life. As a little kid, I'd sit on the floor of our tiny living room with my mom, one or both aunts, and my grandma, and we'd all play an RPG together. We would go to Blockbuster for a new one when the last one was beat. We never beat it in the 5 rental days, so we'd just keep it and play the late fee so we wouldn't lose our save if they forced us to turn it in instead of let us rent it again. We played Final Fantasy 3 stroke 6, 4, Lufia 2, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, Breath of Fire 2, one of the most amazing RPGs ever, and we also loved Zelda, A Link to the Past. When we took a break, my grandma would take over and just run around on the world map, grinding for hours for us. We were always so OP. I miss my grandma so much. I miss those days so much. My family was pretty poor when I was a kid. My mom would work nights and sleep all day and my dad would work days and sleep all night so they didn't have to pay for babysitters. I never got to see my dad much. On weekends, my dad would play video games on the PlayStation. The only ones I really remember are Kingdom Hearts and Tomb Raider. Every Saturday, I'd wake up super early and just sit next to him and watch him play. I used to get super excited when he played Kingdom Hearts. Cause, 
Yeah no, there were a bunch of princesses and I loved Disney. He started to play that one more often, and if he was playing Tomb Raider, he'd switch it over to Kingdom Hearts when I'd come waddling down the stairs. Watching him play video games was one of the only times I got to hang out with him exclusively. They're some of my favorite memories of him. He also helped me build my first gaming PC and taught me how to upgrade and put it together. He's a pretty great dude. Minecraft My first gaming experience was a PlayStation 2 I've had since I was born. I played at least 1000 hours on that thing. And eventually I got an Xbox 360 and that kickstarted the non-stop gaming train I'm still riding today. But it's not just about the fun, sometimes it's about the relatability of the characters, the beauty of the world that people painstakingly crafted just for you to immerse yourself in. And sometimes it's just about escaping reality, to just feel a sense of relief and to have fun when you normally can't. My mum. Dad and the Witcher. I remember I was so freaking scared of the game for the first few days while I was watching them play and then after some time I found myself sneaking in their room and playing it while they were away. Even beat the game before they did. Then they bought me Skyrim and the rest is history. My first game Wii Sports and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Later, Pokemon B and W. The Gamacube with Need for Speed Carbon and Mario Kart Double Dash were or rather still are one of my favorite games and the ones that started my love for video games. Watching my dad and brother play Ratchet and Clank on the PS2. Me and my dad played the entire original Legend of Zelda on NES together. The man would go with me next door to ask the older kid for help on places we were stuck on. What is the best gaming moment you have experienced? Rimworld. I was hunting deer and angered the pack. My entire colony was quickly wiped out by a bunch of deer. My tamer was the only one to survive. So once he was in good health I grabbed my army of squirrels and set out on another deer hunt. My tamer died wearing all deer clothing. With a belly full of deer meat. Doing what he loved most. Killing deer. The cause of death was an infected turtle bite though. If only I had an artist to properly immortalize this moment. I freaking love this game. Seeing the moon in Portal 2, I knew exactly what the frick was about to go down. The end with the moon was pretty fantastic but that game had so many crazy great moments like waking up Gladys for the first time, in that game, or when you realize who Caroline is. Beating that freaking rocket racer C in Lego Racers. He had such a smug little smile and I was glad when he stood a mere second after witnessing my wormhole smackdown. This goddamn plastic ass Mithurfriker. I once won a round of SWAT in Halo Reach alone. My entire team left, with 46 kills and no deaths. Never in my life have I played so well, before or since. Beating another team in Rocket League after around 14 minutes of overtime was a very intense match. I used to love just driving around in GTA, Vice City, listening to the awesome 80s music. I remember one moment where I caught some ear. The game went into the slow mo cinematic view with the sun setting in the background as more than this was playing on the radio and it was just sublime. I freaking love that game. I used to spend hours in that game just cruising and catching air everywhere I could in all different vehicles. That game sparked my life for 80s tunes when I had previously looked at it all as lame or gay. Helps that they included bands like Slayer and Ozzy, because I love me some metal. Oblivion. Leaving the sewers and experiencing a vibrant green world in the Imperial City Tower in the distance. Storming the beach at Normandy in Medal of Honor. Frontline. God, that whole game was a masterpiece back in the day. Back when Halo 3, Odst was new, Bungie issued a challenge to complete four full sets of their new Fight Fight game mode on Heroic or Harder. A set consists of three rounds, and a round consists of five waves. So, my friends and I sat down one evening and slogged through all 60 waves of a Covenant onslaught. As the game goes on, difficulty modifiers get added, famine kicks in, and weapons now drop with half ammo. Black eye kicks in and you can only regenerate health by punching enemies, or catch gets enabled and the enemy suddenly has a ton of grenades, and you're Bruno Mars. Now combine all these and more, and the game gets complicated. Looking back, the achievement wasn't terribly difficult, but it is one of my fondest memories of gaming. 
the rush we got after completing 2 hours and 51 seconds of non-stop action is unforgettable. I had a blast, and have to congratulate Bungie on an awesome experience. My roommates and I like to set bots to max at the lowest difficulty on Nuketown in Black Ops 2. One time we were huddled together in the middle of the map, when all of the sudden all 9 bots just pile out of one of the second story windows, one after another, many of them had difficulty jumping out, so these mildly retarded soldiers were bouncing up and down and running into each other. It may not be the best gaming experience I've had, but dang if it wasn't hilarious to watch, I was crying in laughter. Yep, definitely doing this with my friends now, thanks. The ending of Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, you're in a beautiful field of flowers blowing in the wind, standing over your opponent, who happens to be your mentor, lover, and friend. You've just defeated her, and now you have to kill her. You stand over her holding her own weapon, and the camera pans back and just sits there. I sat for a full 5 minutes waiting for something to happen, but it doesn't. The game makes you pull the trigger, it isn't a cutscene anymore. You kick off the rest of the series with that button, by executing an innocent woman in that field. Crap was powerful, man. Then all the white flowers turn red, crap was nuts yo. Doing the for the horde achievement on WoW when I was like 13. I was woefully under leveled, but running around enemy territory with a group of 40 plus was exhilarating. Plus I got my bear mount really early. For those that don't know, the achievement is to go to every main city on the opposing faction and kill the leader. It's pretty tough and takes a lot of planning. It's geeky as heck, but my desktop background was a screenshot of everybody in a circle with their new black war bear mount circa 2009 or so. Vigil conversation in Mass Effect just felt like all the secrets of the universe had been revealed to me, and a bunch of seemingly random things all connected at once. A long time ago I was playing Ultima Online as a thief. I found a guy killing skeletons in a graveyard and offered to heal him with bandages. Instead he asks me if I want to buy a sword. I say sure, show it to me and right there in the middle of nowhere he plops open a crate filled with swords and armor. So of course I steal one. I skulk off and hide until I'm no longer grey, meaning anyone can kill me for committing a crime, then I return. I'm still grey to him, meaning he can kill me for revenge, but no one else can. He realizes what I've done because when I leave the screen and return it makes my name appear on his screen briefly, which shows him that I'm grey. Of course he attacks me, but this is what I wanted. Once he attacks me, I'm allowed to defend myself per the game's mechanics. So I take off running to town with this guy chasing me. I keep stopping to cast poison on him and his health is just draining real slow the whole time. He starts trying to call the guards, which won't work bc I let my criminal status expire before I approached him the second time, but it leaves him open for a few bigger spells, so I blast him. He starts to realize he isn't going to win, and he realizes he has a ton of valuable stuff on him so he runs to the bank to try and deposit it, but alas, one second after he utters the command bank which opens your bank vault, I blast him with an energy bolt, ending his life. I end up getting the entire crate of armor and weapons, but the story doesn't end there. This guy shows back up and says at the bank, I'm paying $100,000 GP for the head of an airbag boat. So this rando PMs me and says, wanna split 100,000 GP and I agree. I ditch all my items in the bank and we fake a battle in view of this guy. I let him kill me, and after he gets paid he resurrects me and cuts me my half of the gold. After I sold the items I ended up making 150k GP off this one mark. Best highest ever. And before you ask, this was how you played UO. It wasn't griefing back then. Reaching round 45 on World at Ward Ares. Completing the Mass Effect 2 suicide mission with no deaths for the first time. It's built up throughout the entire game and it pays off because when you do do it you feel like an absolute badass who just took on an entire army in one. Admittedly it ain't that hard to pull off if you're doing, but still. Also the Normandy being invaded was intense. On my first playthrough I had no idea it was coming, so it was a big shock. Yeah, the first time round it feels extremely tense. It's just on later playthroughs that you realize it's just a case of doing loyalty missions and picking obvious choices. Spec Ops, the line, gentlemen, welcome to Dubai. Alternatively, Prince of Persia, the two thrones after playing all three games. 
The last line almost made me weep. Was playing FIFA with a group of friends. We would do random teams with one chance at redo if you don't like the team you got first. Buddy ends up with a half star English team and rerolls to get Real Madrid. I get single star Russian team and reroll. I end up with a half star English team this time around. Fully expecting to get rolled. I pulled everyone back and played defense the entire game hoping to force my way to a shootout after OT. My buddy, who is very good at FIFA while I was above average, was a bit cocky but was starting to get frustrated that my guys kept getting in his way. In the closing minutes of the second half I got my chance. On a corner kick, he kicked it to hard and one of my guys ended up with the ball. Turned into a breakaway and somehow my player got behind his last defender. My terrible striker versus one of HTE best goalies in the world. He pulls the keeper thinking he can get to the ball before I get my shot off. I chip his keeper and watch the ball just barely cross the line. Buddy starts flipping crap and now realizes he only has stoppage time to score. Whiffs on his one chance in stoppage and storms out of my apartment for about 10 minutes. This happened almost 4 to 5 years ago and we still don't let him live it down. No matter how many times he beats me in FIFA, he still lost as one of the best teams in the game to a team he should have put 5 plus on. Far Cry 3 flaming the drug fields. Make it bun them. Back in my battlefield 2 days I unintentionally got a guy ban kicked from the server for team kills through an unintended glitch. This happened on the Mashta city map. I was playing a sniper on the tall building overlooking the mosque cap point, which was always one of the most contested cap points on the map. A fully loaded black hawk comes in and starts to hover cap the point. The 50 calories rifle had just come out, which allowed snipers to put rounds through the armored glass of the black hawk. I domed the pilot, one shotting him. Without a pilot the black hawk proceeded to crash, killing everyone inside. Whether it was due to a glitch, or just how it was handled at the time, though, the now deceased pilot got the credit for all of the kills from the crashed Black Hawk, and was instantly ban kicked from the server for exceeding team kill limits. It's his fault for being killed. Back in the early days of MMOs, when EverQuest was still pretty new I joined my first guild. These guys like to just have fun, drunk fighting, secret Santas for X Mars. The most memorable experience was that we all made gnomes on a different server, maybe 20 members and we just did a bunch of fun goofy stuff. And then this druid showed up, likely looking for spells. Our guild leader shouted, get her of course there was nothing we could actually do to this other PC, but just the sight of 20 gnomes running up to you must have looked crazy. She, of course, has so, spirit of wolf, which allows your run speed to be much faster, so she could run away from us at will. But she'd stop and turn around only to see us all chasing after her again. One of those times where you're laughing so hard you're crying and can't breath. Good times. Completing the Vault of Glass and Destiny for the first time. Guardians make their own fate send shivers down my spine every time I see it pop up. And we pushed him off the edge with warlock grenades. I never owned a PS2 so when I inherited one when my girlfriend and I moved in together I got to play some 10 plus year old games that were still new to me. I bought a used copy of Shadow of the Colossus without knowing anything about the game. Based on someone's recommendation on Reddit, now, I'm an old fart that came from simple video games like those in arcades and on the NES. That ride on the horse down into the canyon and climbing up to discover the first Colossus. Following it and having it turn around and look at me, and the sudden shift in music to let me know that there was about to be a fight. Holy crap. I don't think I'll ever experience anything like it again. That game is spectacular. Opening the world map for the first time in World of Warcraft and seeing how big the world game was until my friend told me to right click which zoomed out the map and that's when I saw I was in a tiny zone among many other zones. Then I zoomed out again just for kicks and was mind blown there was a whole another continent across the ocean. Other memorable mentions. Clearing Zalgurub, Bolton Core, BWL, Oni for the first time with my back then guild. It took a lot of work and effort, but definitely some of the best gaming moments I've ever had. Raiding with 39 other people who I've never met and constantly raiding together to form a bond and eventually defeating endgame bosses. Kind of crazy thinking back on it how some of even managed to do it, especially the officers raid leaders keeping 40 people in line and focused. 1994, 
I was 5 years old. My dad came into my bedroom one morning to wake me up. He said he had something awesome to show me. I slowly pulled myself out of bed and followed him. Surly if dad thought it was awesome. It had to be. We walked into the living room and over the hour gateway PC. He pointed at it and smiled. I was confused because this wasn't a new computer. He told me to sit down and turn it on. So I did. He then told me to play Raptor. Call of the Shadows. So I did. This time, though, something was different. He had installed a sound card the night before. So instead of hearing the MIDI stuff, I got to actually hear explosions, machine guns, and music for the first time on the computer. The game suddenly became exponentially more awesome to me. While perhaps a slightly unconventional memory in gaming, this is by far the best one for me. It hooked me on gaming for life. It also got me hooked on tinkering with computers, which I'm now working on doing for the Air Force, which is a much better job than I used to do for the Air Force. When I found out that there was a perk in Fallout 3 that would allow Odogmead to regenerate if he died, I had to restart so many times before the perk because he kept dying and I refused to continue without him. I don't care if he's not the best, strongest, or smartest companion. I love German Shepherds. He was quiet, and he made me feel so much safer skulking around. Wish I could say the same about the dog in Fable 2. He would bark inconsistently at every stump. And by the end when I was a billionaire there's only one real choice I guess. Slaying the dragon. Dragon Slayer. In Counter Strike. Any ace nice play you make really gets my heart pumping. Sort of weird one for me. Back when I was little. Playing whichever Pokemon game that first introduced Crobat, Little Zubat's final evolution. I caught a shiny Zubat because I thought the color was a tad off. Loved that guy and eventually had myself a beautiful pink Crobat. Well, after seeing Goodbye Caterpie or something along that line, where Ash releases his Butterfree to let him go with his pink Butterfree girlfriend, I thought that my Crobat would get lonely by himself and set him free to find a mate. All this because they were both pink. Now I sort of regret this, but I still remember him from time to time when playing X and Y. You just know that every time that Crobat gets some, he's shedding a tear and thanking you from the bottom of his poisonous pink heart. Not knowing where to go in Dark Souls 2, I just thought it was the coolest thing that I was so confused yet was loving slowly figuring out my own story. It was the first Souls game I played and I fell in love with all of them. Beat Cronovi. A few years ago I was super into League of Legends. One night I was playing a ranked match at fairly high level, low diamond high plat if I recall correctly, and everyone at that level usually takes the games pretty seriously. I got far ahead early on, but I was in a silly weird mood so I decided to dance. I typed dance party in all chat and just stood in the middle of the map dancing. I expected someone to try and kill me or poke at me and I was preparing mentally to retaliate. Instead the enemy mid laner who was really far behind just walked up beside me and started dancing as well. He typed dance party in all chat as well and slowly every single person on both teams walked to the middle of the map one by one and started dancing with us. It went on for maybe 2 minutes and then everyone just went back to their lanes to kill large creep waves that had gathered and the game went on like it never happened. It's to this day one of my favorite moments in a game because 10 random people all decided to agree to an unspoken temporary truce to dance together, and no one broke it to try and get ahead. Man I'd have just said in team chat to clap them all. No mercy in league. I've passed the stage of mercy with that fricking game. Frick league. Getting a nuke in Modern Warfare 2 in one of those modded hacked whatever endless 18 player matches on Rust. This was on Xbox 360. Going for my first nuke in MW2. In the chopper gunner mowing people down. I am at 24 kills. I see a guy with a green box around him. I think to myself, OMG they are telling me where to kill this final person. I am going to nuke. I kill myself. No nuke. I was an idiot. Red Dead Redemption Online with 5 mates. We rounded up some bears and had a boxing match on top of a small wooden shack in a snowy mountain area. If you were knocked off, you get mauled by a bear. To be allowed back on the roof, you had to punch one of the bears in the face. Hours of laughter. None of us have forgotten that. Playing Risk for 4 hours with my flatmates. There are 3 of us left and I am alone in Australia. 
Throughout the game I have stocked up on cards for troops and they haven't kept track. The two left think I am out of the game and are focusing on each other, occasionally mocking me. They think I am weak, they will find they are wrong. The game is coming to a close. One rumored seems poised to win. I act. I throw down my cards and create an army vast and wide blocking out Australia from view. They smell of fear and confusion. It is time. I do not seek to win. Winning is impossible. Nor do I seek to fortify and make a comeback. No I push onward taking land after land. I am taking heavy casualties. My flatmates do not understand. I push onward until I am spent. I have taken most of the world but have only a single troop for each place. Easy to lose. They realize what I have done. I have undone 4 hours of gameplay. They will take back most of their land. But we will be as in the beginning. All they have done has been lost. Pointless. Are you freaking killing me? One asks we have been playing for 4 freaking hours. Frick this you wong shaft says the second. They get up and leave angry and lost. I remain. The sole player left and so I am victorious. I sit on my throne of ash and know I have wasted my evening. It is 3 in the morning and I have uni tomorrow at 9. Frick. You can't have more than 5 cards in your hand though. Fellow old minicrafters. What is your best memory from Minecraft? Running a server with my best friend. Was great until he joined an experienced bull team and I started experimenting with making mods. So our playstyles kind of drifted apart. Ran for about 5 years. Kind of also shaped our futures. He's studying architecture and I'm an IT. Proof that video games are beneficial. Making massive redstone base farms so I got like 100 plus carrots per harvest. Then storing them all in some massive chest storage system and making a frick ton of golden carrots from mining in the clay biome. I had so many golden carrots I had to destroy a whole forest to have enough chests to keep them in. I knew nothing about Minecraft at all. I had only heard of it. My 5 year old daughter wanted to try it so I got it for her. I thought it was just her building game and didn't know there were enemies and you could die. That first hour of it getting dark and frantically trying to build walls. Only to learn they can spawn anywhere in the dark and were now inside. Etc. It was crazy. I did exactly the same thing. Also accidentally hit evolve when I was checking to see if I could pet it. Building maps. Uploading them. Have 1000 plus people download them and leave nice comments. About 9 years ago my best friend and I would race home from school just to play Minecraft together as much as we could. We didn't realize Skype was thing so we just called each other from our house phones and stayed up into the wee hours of the night. Our big thing was always to make a public server that we ran together. They never worked out despite our best efforts. We made countless worlds where we built spawns, arenas, shops, etc. About 3 years ago he was in a terrible vehicle accident and he passed away. His family gave me his old laptop as a present because they knew how much time we spent with each other over video games. Sometimes I boot up that old laptop, close all the pop-ups, open up an old version of Minecraft and just walk around those countless worlds we created together. Good times. Make sure to back up all those worlds. Don't wanna lose those memories. Playing on a server with my friends using Hamachi. Good old times. My friends and I would constantly make new servers and just restart everything. There was one server that we lost that I always wish I could go back to. It was right after the NPC village update and we had one spawn on a mountain in the middle of some plains. It was sloped so the road in the village went from the bottom perfectly up to the top with all the buildings on the side of the mountain. It's like how you would imagine someone who wanted to do that would make it. It was so perfectly placed and my house was the blacksmith's house. I wish I could go back. It was so perfectly placed and my house was the blacksmith's house. I always made my houses in the librarian's house. Big enough and I could easily add a second floor. So, when I was 13 or so I was very 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 stupid. I would play on this prison server, which, if you don't know is a server where the goal is to grind for resources. And that's it. All you got was basically bragging rights. And I started talking to a fellow player. We were on at the same time a lot and would talk using the in-game chat. And eventually we got on Skype. Since to my knowledge Discord didn't exist. Or at least people didn't use it like they do today. Surprise. The other player is a girl. Anyways. We got along really well for a while and she asked me where I was from. And I said the Chicago suburbs. 
She said she was also from the Chicago suburbs. Turns out, we were literally in the towns next to each other. One time towards the end of my Minecraft playing career, my dad mentioned he was going to the grocery store that was on the border of the two towns, and he asked if I wanted to come with. Obviously I said yes and got on Skype and asked her to meet me there. Basically all that happened was we made eye contact, and said nothing to each other. I wonder how she's doing, and that's the story of how I should have gotten kidnapped. Crap had me on edge holy frickle mayo. I used to go on a pretty popular faction server with my friend and it was pretty pvp. There were various cities and each city had a mayor. We joined one of the biggest factions and the mayor let us run a little shop. You couldn't fight or destroy other properties unless the mayor gave you privilege to do so. We wanted to be peaceful so didn't invest much in weapons. Plus TNT was banned and anyone caught with it would be kicked out of the city. There was this one shopkeeper in the city called Hein Bob. He was very quiet and barely talked to anyone and had the default Steve skin and just stood in his shop all day long but always seemed to have everything. He hated other shops too but never outright said it but we found him snooping around other shops and following people when they went to gather resources so he could sneak in and steal any resources people hadn't yet mined. One day though, the mayor accidentally deleted the faction so the entire city basically went into a wilderness territory. Instantly it devolved into anarchy and people started attacking each other and setting things on fire. My friend and I tried hiding in our shop and watched people being murdered on the street. We could hear TNT explosions too and in the midst of the fighting we saw Hyam Bob walking among the carnage with a block of TNT. Eventually we got attacked and had to make a run for it with our most valuable stuff. I was on low health being shot by an archer so I put up a few blocks of dirt as a shield whilst begging my friend to help me. Out of nowhere I saw my friend, Optimus Prime skin too, run over to the archer and kill him with a block of dirt. We got his stuff, including TNT. I guess he killed Hein Bob, and ran back to our shop which is when the mayor finally restored the faction. Lots of stuff was destroyed but our shop was intact. The guy we killed proper raged for his stuff back but we kept refusing and started trolling him by saying stuff like anyone wanna buy steel legs or trying to sell other stuff we took off him. Eventually the mayor came over and kept the peace by giving us better stuff in exchange for us giving the guy his stuff back. Lots of shops got destroyed and no one knew who did it but we knew. We knew it was Heim Bob with TNT. I was pretty new to the game when this happened. Way back around the time multiplayer was first added. Found a hole that a friend had dug straight down into a cave. Bottom was basically out of view. Wanted to go down and set up a ladder so to safely get down I started dropping sand and gravel down the hole to dig down afterwards. I spent a good while dropping the blocks down and had to keep farming up more and more. I was shocked at how deep this hole must have been. No matter how many blocks I tossed down the stack didn't seem to be getting closer. Finally I made a hoopsie and when approaching the hole I forgot to hold shift and fell all the way down to my death. While laying there, bones shattered, I noticed a large pile of loose sand and gravel all around me and the torch I landed on. That's when I learned about the interactions with falling blocks and torches. I spent years on a survival server in one of the higher ranking clans. It always annoyed me and my clan to see other high ranking clans raiding the new player towns and slaughtering them. It discouraged new players to stay on the server. One particular slaughter the new players were coming out one by one with stone swords and no armor, no potions, no enchantments trying to defend. They were outgunned against 5 enchanted diamond armor wearing twats. They would get slaughtered, respawn and try again. While I admired their tenacity, it was honestly pathetic. One of my clan members and I went over with a boatload of gear and convinced the new players to regroup, armor up and attack collectively. The justice that followed was quite the spectacle. We engaged the high ranking players as a group and they immediately attempted to flee. It is with great satisfaction I can say that none of them escaped. They were slaughtered. The face of a coward really does look like the back of a head. Who off. I can say I was one of those new players that would get discouraged. I eventually stopped playing PvP and stopped MC altogether, despite the memories. I used to be an admin on a server when Minecraft was very popular. I had been on this server for probably 2 years and worked my way up to admin. But shortly after, after building for the owner and getting tons of new players to join, I found out he was using the donation money to buy drugs and personal things despite saying all the money goes back to the server. 
I confronted him about it and he basically said yeah I'm lying to the players, who cares? He basically told me to go frick myself so I said okay, sounds good man, good luck. The next day I world edited the spawn to crap and made people spawn over lava. I killed the server and the overwrote is save, and killed the server immediately as I made my own server, bringing people over who were tired of said person. Was there a more mature way to do it? Probably, but 16 year old me at the time didn't care. In my eyes, I was bringing him to justice, and giving players a more active server that was cared about for more than drug money. It felt great. The good kind of evil. When I was in college my long distance boyfriend and I would play Minecraft together on a server. The one day I was working on our home base without him another player came up to me and started throwing flowers at me lol. Then he asked me how old I was and I said 19. He said me too. Minus 8. It was adorable. Hol up. Creeper. Oh man. So way back in the mine. There was this one time on my servers where I got P cause everyone in the server decided to start murdering each other. Punishment? Locked down all the stores and all the buildings in the town. They all just lost it and begged for me to make everything go back to normal. Me, being a lil edge lord, forced the whole server to build an altar and sacrifice a sheep on it but they had to kill the sheep with cooked mutton. Then eat the sheep's raw mutton. Everyone was so confused and disturbed as I watched in the distance as they did their ritual. I basically made a Minecraft sheep cult that lasted for like, 10 minutes. I love it. Few years back I and my friend built Helsinki in Minecraft Lite. Then, had to close the app. Go make Helsinki in Earthmk. Skyblock.net. Glad I'm not the only one who grew up with this server. It was one of the first ones I joined before 1. 5. 2. I always remember furiously waiting for someone to leave so I could join, as there were only 500 slots. It was just an awesome way to bond with my kid at the time. We built all these crazy worlds and had tons of fun. He's moved on to Fortnite and Roblox now and it just isn't the same. Minecraft will forever be the best. This was years ago, like Alpha. My friend was really into building cannons. He builds his house on top of a tree with a cannon built into it with an observation deck up top. He's been working on this cannon for a while. He calls us all over to watch him fire it off a few times. The first few shots go fine. It's pretty cool. On the next shot, he flicks the switches in the wrong order and it all blows up in the chamber. We're sitting on the observation deck, waiting to see some TNT fly to the horizon. He yells something, and we turn around and see that most of the house, barring the deck is gone. He'd blown his whole house up. It was terrible in the moment, but it's hilarious looking back on it. When I first ever started playing Minecraft I joined a server for the website Diorg. This was back in Minecraft 1.4 and everybody was just so nice to each other. Basically people on there taught me how to play Minecraft and no other server I have played on has been the same. I have more stories from the server if anyone wants to hear them the server itself has sadly been shut down for years. A couple months ago me, my brother, and one of our friends set up a server for Minecraft 1, 2, 1 and it was just so nice and simple to play in that. For a while we weren't talking because we were lol busy doing whatever, when my brother fell down a hole, turned around, and screamed so loudly and so scared, oh god a creeper it was just so funny we were all in tears from laughing. When I first started playing before 1, 0, 0 was released, I would play with my brother and my dad. We built a wall of china around our base and followed Paul Soros videos. Minecraft dad. He is an amazing dude and fueled my passion for the game. My most nostalgic memories were all mining for coal together since we ran out so often. And repairing creeper holes on our football field since it was poorly lit. Due to the lack of coal. I remember when I first saw the temple of Notch or however it was called and it was bamboozled for like 3 days straight thinking about how it works. Never realized it until I had thought about it recently and realized it's just redstone. The temple of Notch. Me destroying my friend's nether portal with my fists while he was in there. He never found out it was me, as our entire class had our own server and like 6 people were online, but he was so mad, and demanded some other guy to make his portal again. So he could go back to the overworld. You are evil. In Minecraft Creative More, I used to construct a bunch of things with by myself or with friends. 
from schools to cities to anything really. I wouldn't really do much with friends and survival or really remember me playing survival mode. Man. I sure do love great content. And I'm working on some of that over at Dude Man. So you should you should go there right now. Go there. Go if you aren't subscribed to this channel, subscribe. Then go over to Dude Man. Right there, right there. You click you click right there. You click right there. You better do it. You better, so help me, you better go over there. Because you deserve something good. I put my heart and soul into this stuff, man. You don't even understand. No pressure.